Alright, welcome to this video. It's a wee spin-off video. Nothing much is happening in the way of clear skies just now over Scotland. It's been cloudy for ages. I've been able to shoot the stars once since I've been back from Iceland and it's just been constant clouds so I had to do something different just to, to get the astral fix again so I thought why not um, look at some other of your images and kind of rate them and see what I would do to fix them or to improve them or if they're just absolutely perfect because there's been some crackers sent in and some pictures that I'm very jealous of so I've been sitting in a good few and I'll just go through them see what see what's what pretty much just have a bit of fun and um, yeah I'm just gonna pick like say a random winner of a picture that I like that's quite unique and they can get a set of my astral presets that I designed uh, last year on Lightroom so you can kind of do one click and it edits your astral picture really well and there's like presets on it for pretty much everything in the night sky so noxus and clouds, aurora, milky way, orion just makes stars pop, shadows get brighter, noise reduction all included in these presets so someone's gonna win that and I'll pretty much send it to them and yeah they can play about with that so yeah I'm just gonna get into the video and let's look at some of your images that you've sent in throughout Scotland. So here's the first one by Andy Cole, shot uh, 11 millimeters ISO 6400 and 13 seconds and as you can agree it's pretty nice, it's lovely little colours. I think this is captured at the top of Scotland so you don't get the Milky Way core, you kind of get the, is it the Great Rift you normally call it. But yeah, great image, uh, really really wide, you can tell it's 11 millimeters. it's got really quite a lot. Nice wee foreground with the house. And yeah, pretty good. The only thing I would do with it is it looks like it's been probably dehazed quite a lot, so you see a lot of. So it just looks a bit purple almost. So I would have just took the dehaze off a wee bit and maybe not made it as purple. Uh, but still, brilliant detail in it. The foreground as well, I'd probably try and bring up the shadows in the foreground. They're black, which is a nice silhouette, but I like kind of making foregrounds nice and bright and it looks like kind of daytime, not daytime, but you see the the landscape element with the night sky. But everything's subjective in photography. You know, you could go to the exact same place with the exact same equipment with another photographer, you'll both get different outcomes and you both edit pictures to what you want. But yeah, this one from Andy Cole is fantastic. I just think it's a wee bit too purple and um, I would have just liked to soften it up a wee bit. It just looks a wee bit, not messy, but a wee bit busy. I would have tried to just smooth it out a wee bit. This one from Greg Sheard, absolutely stunning. Obviously it's not Scotland, unfortunately. If we've got a show like this over Scotland, it'd be pretty phenomenal. But yeah, absolutely. I think the colours on that is bang on. It's nice and cold effect. You can kind of get the cold vibe on it. Obviously nice snow in the foreground, which illuminates the shadows. Perfect, uh, absolutely perfect foreground as well. He's got the colours of the aurora perfect. It's like blue aurora, and he must have got the shutter speed fantastic on it because you can see the pillars. Because if you do a really long exposure, under fast aurora when it's overhead, it kind of gets smoothed out just because the aurora is literally moving so fast. So he's absolutely nailed the shutter speed, shutter speed on this and the foreground is just fantastic. Not much I would have done else with that, so absolutely phenomenal. I'd probably got a nice time lapse um, because you'd see the clouds moving and the aurora dancing. But yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Can't really say anything about that other than that's pretty, he's pretty nailed that shot with the colours. Uh, so Neil Milne, I had the pleasure of meeting Neil Milne just for a brief minute, uh, we were both shooting the Milky Way at our broth a few years ago, it was good to see that he stuck around on my page and watched my content and stuff. This one is the Milky Way with a t I think it's either a shooting star or a meteor, it looks like a meteor because it gets fat at the end and you can just see the kind of the, the galactic core over a lovely lighthouse. Absolutely phenomenal, uh, nice foreground. Yeah, you can see pretty much everything in the foreground, good colours, absolutely, yeah, couldn't have denied that. I would have probably just got a nice time lapse of that and maybe try to get a wee bit more detail in the Milky Way. I don't know if this was like twilight, because uh, it's kind of bluey in the sky. And I don't know what that is, in the, right in the horizon you can see kind of light on the clouds, I don't know if that's a moonrise uh, coming. So maybe the moon was in the sky, but yeah. The only thing I would have done with this is just try to get darker skies, but pretty much nailed this one, well done Neil. And this one by Neil that you sent in as well is absolutely stunning, he, um, it's like a storm cloud with lightning over over the Arbroath Harbour and yeah it absolutely nailed this, this image. I've never shot lightning like this before so it's something I'd love to do. But yeah foreground's nice, oh he's even got stars as well so it's pretty damn phenomenal. Um, yeah, Can't deny anything with that, that one's a pretty fantastic image so well done for that. 
Another one of Neil's is this Milky Way over like a little cottagey bothy thing. Pretty nice, nice warm feel of the of the bothy, the cottage, and the Milky Way is pretty fantastic. It's nothing more you I would have tried to do, do there. Um, I do think sometimes, I think I can tell this one's probably been shot on a Nikon, just because it's a wee bit more darker. My Sony image, my Sony cameras, seem to just collect more light and it just makes the scene more lighter. Nikon cameras seem to, I think it's Nikon, might be wrong, but other cameras you can tell they're not Sony's because it's a wee bit darker, the blacks are a wee bit more black, but it's personal preference. I like the Sony images because they just get more light in the image and you can play about with it more, so my personal preference, I would just like to lighten this image up just a wee bit more, um, but you can't deny it's a, it's a good image. Maybe track the sky as well so you get more detail in the Milky Way, the Great Rift. But yeah, fantastic little foreground. Really, really like that. Well done. Uh, another one from Neil is the Milky Way over this lovely Scottish harbour with the lighthouse. Fantastic. And um, yeah, you can't really deny nothing about that. Yet again, I'd probably just try and get a, a nice time lapse. That would just be awesome for the Milky Way going along. But yeah, absolutely fantastic image. Uh, maybe a wee bit more colour. It's a wee bit not black and white, but you know, dull with the colour. So maybe I would maybe put the saturation up a tiny, tiny bit, get a wee bit more pop. But yeah, again, totally subjective uh, photography. So yeah, fantastic image you get here again. And one more image that Neil sent in is this one, and I really, really like this. So see how I mean. Uh, this one is a wee bit brighter than the other one with the cottage. The cottage one was darker. So I'd like to see if this was captured on a Nikon or something else. This looks like a Sony image. Could be wrong, but you can just see it's just a wee bit brighter, but lighter. And yeah, this I think this was, um, can't, I can't remember he put in his email, I think it was up in the Hebrides this was captured, so that's somewhere I'd love to photograph one day, and definitely want to do it soon. But yeah, look at that, I think that's Jupiter and Saturn maybe, uh, with the Milky Way. The only thing that's obviously out of control is if the Milky Way was right over the road, that would have been fantastic. But yeah, I really, really like this image because it's just up my street, nice colours, you know, the saturation is pretty perfect. Uh, some people do like black and white or... Uh, brownie images because that's apparently what the night sky looks like but um, I kind of liked it, you know, it's an image, it's an art sort of form so make it look pop pretty and make it pop and this one's definitely popped I don't know if he's used star glow filters or anything on this or just processed it perfectly but this is definitely the favourite so far so well done Neil this is up my street <laughs> here we go, so another person sent in, Richard Williams sent in a couple of images so this one's of the Milky Way over a lovely countryside only thing I would do with it, it looks a wee bit noisy or dehazed a bit. I would just kind of smoothen it out and yet yeah, again, probably go up this, the ISO or the shutter speed just a wee bit just to, to brighten things again. I like a nice bright image. Uh, but yeah, pretty good. Got some really, really good detail in the Milky Way core, but probably just a wee bit more colour would be pretty cool. But if it was through light pollution, it's going to be hard to pick up the, the detail. So if this was like over a town or city, and he's pretty much um, got the best image you can for the Milky Way. Another one from Richard is this one. Uh, as you can see, it's a wee bit, it's lovely at the foreground and stuff, but you can see there's a few artifacts, or maybe it was just really foggy or misty, uh, just between the foreground, where the foreground meets the sky, it looks a bit jumbled, so I don't know what Richard's really done with the processing, but still a nice image of the Milky Way over a lovely like, group of trees, fantastic, but I just think, some people try and overcomplicate pictures sometimes, so just get one image and then process that as much as you can, rather than getting a million images and try to blend things, because night sky is really hard. But yeah, you can see he's done a few artifacts and blending, so it's just a wee bit chaotic, so just kind of simplify it and you'll be much better. Um, another one of Richard is this one. This one is Venus with Saturn. Fantastic little <laughs> conjunction, you can't beat a conjunction. Venus is so bright, it's in the sky just now as well, so I'm going to try and capture it as well whenever we get the clear skies. But yeah, fantastic. You can tell it's been captured at quite a good focal length, just because they're small in the sky. And you can see a wee bit of the star trail on Saturn. Planet trail, actually. Planet trail on Saturn. So, yeah, sky tracker would probably be the best for this, or just shorten the, the exposure time to get this in higher the eye. So, but yeah, lovely little conjunction, can't deny that. Yeah, another one from Richard is Orion, Mars and a satellite, fantastic, not sure if it's ISS or just another satellite, probably looks like the ISS because it's that bright, uh, but yeah, yeah again at the bottom of the image there's some artefacts at the bottom, so I don't know what 
what's happened there. Um, maybe you know the mist or the fog. This has played a bit of problems in the processing. But yeah, perfect image. You can see the constellations nice and bright. See the planet Mars. Really, really good image just to see the constellation. So it's always good having images like this, just of a plain constellation, not much foreground. Just you know highlights the beauty of the night sky. So yeah, fantastic image. Here's an image from Stuart Gilbert, which is pretty stunning. This is the foreground sort of I like, as again, subjective, so don't take anything offensively. Everyone's different, but I like a nice bright foreground. And as you can see, this castle, really, really bright. You can see all the detail in the, in the foreground, so you must have done a, a foreground exposure and then mucked about with the night sky. Or it could be one and it's just been a really good blind. But yeah, perfect foreground. It's just so, so clean. You can even just zoom in and you can see de details. Oh yeah, yeah, be beautiful foreground, and the and the Milky Way Great Rift and the Milky Way Great Rift behind it, just fantastic. The only thing for this is just maybe track the night sky and you get more detail, but depends. I don't know really where. I think this is taken at Belvard Castle. I might be wrong. Pretty sure it's Belvard Castle. Uh, so yeah, I know the light pollution is a bit hard there, so um, it's quite hard to do a sky tracker um, image there. But yeah, fantastic image, can't really fault that. I would probably, the only thing I would have done is, because the Milky Way Great Rift it's not really the greatest detail, I'd probably just put a star cool filler in that, let the images pop, or do a wee bit in processing, let the stars pop, it just adds another wee bit of beauty in the night sky. But yeah, fantastic image, love that foreground. Here's someone from, uh, so... Another person, Stephen, sent in an image, a few images, and you can see this lovely panorama of the Milky Way. Nice foreground, nice kind of shadowed foreground, lovely foreground, nice like silhouette foreground, all nice and black, love that. Only thing I'd do is, this is probably stitched together in something like Lightroom or Photoshop, that's not the best, they, they can get good stitches of astro images, but PT GUI is by far the best and it gets all these kind of, you can see these wee black lines like say right in the middle where sometimes the software struggles to stitch them but PT GUI just totally eliminates that so I just recommend use a better software PT GUI for astro image panoramas but it is expensive, it's like £170 but it's really worth it if you want to do 360s and just make panoramas perfect but yeah, you can tell this was probably captured on a Canon or a Nikon as well just because it's dark images yeah, again, I kind of like the bright images, but yeah, you can perfect. He's got some pink in the Milky Way as well, which is fantastic. So he's got some nebula shining through, which is fantastic. Here's another image from Stephen, which is like the moon going behind some Sihar. I'm pretty sure he said, um, lovely image. It'd just been better if it was a wee bit wider and you could see more of the the moon trail. But yeah, fantastic. I would have just gone a wee bit wider and captured a wee bit more, and maybe get an, a different foreground. But this foreground is actually quite nice because you know the moon's at the left and then the trees are on the right, so it kind of comes together pretty nicely. So nice image. Yeah. Another one of Stephen's images is Bullfiddle Rock with Aurora, which is perfect. That's one shot that I really want to get one day, and shots like this just want me to get it even more. So yeah, perfect framing. Got the Bullfiddle Rock on the right and then the Aurora on the left. Nice Aurora arc. Love the Aurora arc in Scotland. And you can also see just above the the arc, you can see Andromeda above the green which is fantastic. Not much else I could have done with that, um, I would have probably just got it a wee bit brighter and made it less pink, it's a wee bit pinky purple so I don't know if there's been de some dehaze on that um, and probably reduced a wee bit more noise just to make it a wee bit smoother but foreground wise, sky wise, composition wise, absolutely perfect so it'd be good if it was dancing a wee bit, You'd say if you got a few pillars that would be even better but knowing the Aurora it's pretty hard to get what you want. Stuart Gilbert sent in this lovely image of the Milky Way, the Great Rift, over some lovely rocks. Absolutely fantastic. Looks like there's quite a lot of light pollution on the horizon, so it could have been over a city or a town. So, I mean, you can only do what you can do with that. Uh, it's quite blue. I'd have probably take, taken down the blue. Probably the white balance has just kicked off into the blue. I'd have took down the blue, tried to get a wee bit more different colours in it, because it just seems to be blue throughout. And yet again, for the Great Rift, there's you know a couple of bright stars around that, so I would have tried to make them pop a wee bit more. Um, but yeah, foreground's actually quite nice, you know, it's something different. I would have probably, because it's quite an easy foreground with a line, I would have probably done a long exposure on that, and then did a sky exposure, and then blended the two together, just because you can see the foreground's still a wee bit dark. So I would have got that nice and bright, and maybe, yeah, 
popped a few of the stars in the night sky, brought down the blue, and yeah, it would be a pretty nice, great rift image. And the last one for the video is another one from Stuart, and uh, you can see a beautiful graveyard, churchy vibe, which is a fantastic image. And yeah, you can definitely see he knows how to do the foregrounds pretty damn well, and he's blended them perfectly. You can see how he's blending them, some of the leaves are a wee bit sharp when you zoom in. Um, so you can tell he has blended it, but absolutely fantastic when you zoom out, that is a brilliant image. Yeah, if I could blend images like that I'd be happy as well because I struggled with the trees and he's blended the trees together with in this image, fantastic. So yeah, well done for that. Um, I'm still learning how to blend with trees and the graves is, in the foreground is perfect. Done an awesome job in the foreground, nice and sharp. And the sky is awesome as well. Nice bright stars, you can see Andromeda on the top right. Looks still a wee bit too blue for me. I would probably just try to make it a wee bit more different colours, just so the different things to look at. It's just beautiful foreground, but I think the sky just, it's a cold vibe, it's really blue. So yeah, fantastic image. Another image sent in by Matthew Gordon is this fantastic little Aurora picture over a nice wee kind of lighthouse or pier. I'm not sure where it is, probably looks like the Moray Firth, just because there's a lot of sea to the north, probably is. And yeah, fantastic image. I would have probably just made that little uh, Big Dipper pop a wee bit more. Just makes another wee something in the, in the image just to look at. But yeah, fantastic Aurora. And i um, glad you got a show because I know how hard and challenging it is can be sometimes. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't really change much. I'd probably just kind of make the stars uh, pop a wee bit more. And maybe capture the Aurora when it's more vivid and structured. This one's a wee bit diffuse. Still beautiful. But I kind of like uh, nice structures and pillars and stuff dancing. So, but fantastic image. Uh, Sam Bilner sent in a few images. First one is of these Noctis and Clouds. Fantastic image. Um, he luckily got the Noctis and Clouds show last summer when it was red on top, which is really rare. I've never captured red Noctis and Clouds before. But you can see it's just a stunning display, really good detail. I mean, you zoom nice and close in, it's fantastic detail on it. Uh, nice, nice waves in the clouds. The foreground's the only thing I would probably change. You can see a wee bit of the sea down to the left. I would probably go beside the sea and capture this display uh, with like, a nice sea beach view or something. Just there's not much in the foreground, but you never know what time and he could have been busy or this was out of his bedroom window or something, whatever. Uh, but yeah, just the foreground I would improve on, but fantastic image of Noctis and Clouds. You've got the settings perfect for that. Another Sam Bilner image is of the aurora which is fantastic pillars really really high up you can see that red one just off to the center to the right really really high in the night sky lovely sort of you, you can see he's doing light painting in the foreground i'm not a huge fan of light painting i just like having like natural light um, in the foreground but yeah perfect image I'd have been happier with some more structure in the aurora this is quite diffuse and it's kind of the pulsating mode of the aurora so if it was pillars and really good structure, that would have been a cracker an image. Another one by Sam Bilner was this of the moon rise, uh, moonset, sorry. Fantastic image, you can see a nice boat, lovely mountains, perfect kind of composition. Uh, well edited, like to get the, the moon perfect beside each other. And yeah, you can't really deny that, this the cracking picture wouldn't really change much. Just a really, really good, unique picture. Uh, last one from Selbil, Sam Bilner is this one. Um, yeah, again, somewhere up in the Highlands of Scotland. A lovely car trail image all the way down the valley. Fantastic. You can just see Pleiades and Aldebaran Taurus sort of coming up. I would probably the only thing that made this image better if you maybe waited a few hours and then Orion would be right at the top right and it would just it been a perfect image. But yeah, fantastic image. I would have just waited a wee bit longer for Orion to make it. Timing is everything in astrophotography absolutely everything. Uh, you can see a lot of air glow as well, you can see kind of red mist in the sky, can't help that, but yeah fantastic, just waited a wee few more hours and got that Orion and that would have made the image ten times better. And that is all the images, so time to pick a winner for the presets. Um, oh it's close, Sam's got a few crackers, that Noctis and Cloud one is fantastic, I think just the foreground, the foreground is a bit more unique, perfect that would have won it. Uh, I like Neil Milne's colours, they're right up my street. Um, Neil Milne's, the lightning one's probably the best professional picture. You could definitely see that. 
uh, printed out and doing really really well. I'm, I'm going to stick to like night sky sort of things as well. Even though that is the night sky and a storm, I want to stick to like kind of the Milky Way, the Aurora Nox as a clouds thing. Greg Sheard with that Iceland Aurora picture, fantastic. Yeah, you couldn't get a better image than that, absolutely nailed the settings. But because this is, I'm going to do a Scotland picture, just for Scotland's night sky's sake. Um, and Stuart Gilbert is the best foregrounds, nailed his foregrounds, I really like that cemetery image with the church and the, the graveyards, fantastic image, but I think, personal favourite, obviously this is completely subjective, and everyone's got their own favourite, between that, not just, I'm going to go for Neil Milne's one in the Outer Hebrides, when it's the lovely colours in the night sky, If that, it's probably like a 9 out of 10, if that galactic core was right over the Road, 10 out of 10, perfect, but it's just down to my editing, that's that's the best sort of picture for me, it's just got the, it's nice and light, good foreground, nice and sharp foreground, good star pop in it, good Milky Way-ish, it's just out of position, just a wee bit, a nice panorama would be perfect, but yeah, it's everything I like, good foreground, nice and light, good colours, star, stars popping, nice and colourful, and yeah, I'm going to go for Neil Mills, so well done Neil, I'll contact you with all the details and stuff for the presets, easy enough and yeah thank you everyone for sending in their pictures some crackers and let's just hope for clear skies very soon so thank you very much cheers <laughs>